Okay, tonight here at the Oklahoma History Center, we have an event that will commemorate the 60th anniversary of the first peaceful sit-ins in Oklahoma City history, because it was on August 19th, 1958, that Clara Looper and members of the Youth Council of the NAACP marched into a dining hall downtown, sat on the stools, and tried to order. This was done at a time when we still had de facto segregation. Even though schools theoretically had been desegregated through a series of U.S. Supreme Court decisions, in terms of everyday life, there was no law that forced a business owner to serve a person of, quote, color at the time. Clara Looper, Roscoe Dungy, those pioneers of the civil rights movement knew that they had to change people, not just in the court of law, or in the state or national capital, but in their hearts and in their minds. And their idea was to take this struggle into the restaurants downtown with the press writing about it, with this new thing called television, bringing those images into people's homes. And at the time, even though we had been segregated since 1907, Senate Bill number one was the Jim Crow bill that people because of the pigment of their skin, could not go to certain neighborhoods, could not go to churches, to schools with, with white people. It was still kind of a, a distant concept to most Oklahomans. Because the races were so segregated, white people did not know the impact of segregation on a daily basis. I never went to school with an African American until I went to college. And I'm not an old, old man, but I never had that experience. I didn't know I was being a victim of segregation in my own little slight way, but I was because I was denied the right to make friends and to learn about other cultures and the diversity and the richness of the people of Oklahoma City. But here it came into our living rooms. And in the days of live television, it was so much different than it is now with the streaming world, with this oversaturation of media. Then that television was another member of the family. And suddenly, right there before our very eyes, we could see young people, these innocent young kids, risking their own safety to make a statement. And led by that dedicated leader, Clara Looper, they were willing to take that risk to change everything thereafter. And gradually, the hearts and the minds started following the letter of the law and said, yes, we should treat everyone the same because of the pigment of a person's skin does not mean they should be denied their civil rights. Everyone should be treated equally. Will this event that we're holding here at the History Center tonight to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the sit-ins is done for a very specific purpose. We need to not just remember the, the bravery and the commitment and the sacrifice made by those people during the sit-ins, but we need to have that dialogue today. Yes, racism was a part of our story on August 19, 1958. Today, racism is still part of our lives. We still have to have dialogue. We have to understand that it's too easy to fall in to hate and bigotry and a lack of respect for others. It's so easy. We've seen that leaders can dehumanize other groups of people because of the pigment of their skin or their nationality or their religion. And it's so easy for people to be confused. We have to remind people that racism is still part of our lives today. We've got to push back. We have to follow the examples of people like Clara Looper and those children willing to take that risk. And that we too have to take the risk and speak up against racism and bigotry and the politics of hate and fear. People who try to divide us and to remember that we are one community and we should treat everyone equally. We lived in a neighborhood called Carverdale Edition, one of the more upscale African-American communities. And um, so in many, in, in, in many, sense, in many senses, um, we were insulated pretty much from segregation. Uh, our parents would uh, 
prepare us to go downtown. Make sure you go to the bathroom. Make sure you had something to eat. And, uh, and so we, without knowing it, we were being navigated through the, the worst part of, of, of segregation without even knowing it. Yeah. Um, so we thought that when they put the jeans up around the waist, uh, that that was where everybody bought jeans. <laughs> we didn't know that they were doing that. We had to do that to keep from uh, putting them on because we didn't have the ability to put them on. And there were the you know, white and colored water fountains. Um, but you know, I think we've come a long way since since those days. In fact, I know we have. Um, here at the History Center, I had a chance one one afternoon to watch these kids playing with our exhibit on white and colored water fountains. And they were trying to make water come out, which it wouldn't, it wouldn't do. Yeah. But uh, I finally heard one of them in frustration say, well, what color is the water supposed to be? <laughs> I mean, they thought colored meant colored water. Yeah. <laughs> so we've come a long way. Yeah. But we don't want to, that does not mean that we should forget uh, from whence we, we, we came. And, uh, and that's part of what the program tonight is, is all about. You know, Oklahoma played a very unique uh, ex uh, part of the civil rights movement in America and uh, none more important than what those young kids did and Clara Luper did on August the 19th, 1958 uh, when they wanted to change the world. <laughs> they wanted to change the world and, uh, and that's what we're here celebrating tonight. We'd have Chinese food for dinner, maybe once a month, something like that. And it was a ritual that we would go through all the, you know, we'd all pile up in the car and, and, and go downtown and go to a restaurant and get the food. And uh, I, was standing, I was sitting in this gallery, in this exhibit, uh, probably doing a tour, when it finally dawned on me. The place that we went was in an alley. My dad would get out of the car and go in the door, but it wasn't the front door, it was the back door. And he got the, the food and, uh, and all bagged up, and we took it home and spread it out on the table, and that was how we enjoyed Chinese food. Mm. And, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't until I was here that I realized that the reason he was uh, going to the back door was because he could not go through the front door. And this is with this lady who changed the, America. Yeah. You know, my mom sitting on the other seat. Yeah. You know, no matter that you know she did that, uh, she still had to had to suffer the indignities that, that she did until Clara Luper came on and picked up the torch at that point. We know we can do better. Those kids at that lunch counter on August 19th, 1958 knew better. Their mentor, Clara Looper, knew better. We've got to make sure those lessons are preserved in the collections, in these exhibits, through programs like we're showing tonight. Hopefully at the 75th anniversary, I'll be long gone, but hopefully there'll be an administrator. He says, wait a minute, we still need this dialogue. We have not overcome the limitations of our human DNA and racism is still a part of our lives and I have no doubt it still will be. So how do we deal with it? Dialogue, reach out, love one another, follow, you know, the principles of, of Jesus Christ, you know, love one another, treat others as you would have them treat you. You know, it, it all comes together that we can do better. We've got to know the history, apply it to our lives today, try to get better, and then make sure that our children are not going to be handicapped the same way we were in our lifetime, and that those young children growing up in African-American families did not have to suffer what those kids on August 19, 1958 had to go through, going into a hostile environment and saying, we too are human beings. Treat us equally. Uh, we need to make sure people remember that story.